today we want to talk about the nutritional requirements of sheep in the different stages and how they just kind of change. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty numbers, um, mostly because I didn't want to go pull the big books out, but you can look that up online. Um, it's pretty easy. They're out there. It's fine. You don't have to have a special license to go look them up. Just Google it. But this is going to be a broad overview. If you have specific questions, join my group. It's free. I'm going into more of the nitty gritty details in that group, just to keep things simple. Um, so, nutritional requirements. Requirements. First of all, it's going to differ by breed, by age, season, and a little bit by gender when you get into mature. So, um, let's start with rams because that's honestly the easiest and most consistent. Rams really don't need a whole lot. Um, you do, however, want to make sure they are in really good condition heading into breeding season. So, um, like our rams get alfalfa, and then right before breeding, they usually get a little bit of corn. Um, but right before breeding, we go through and make sure everybody's in a good body condition. There's nobody skinny, there's nothing going on, and we do that a couple months before so we can get their reserves built up. You don't want them too fat, because fat rams don't breed. However, if they're too skinny going into breeding season, they will actually come out of breeding season emaciated. Because they kind of forget to eat. Just a ram thing. If you haven't figured this out, a ram is an intact male. Okay? When they're working, they forget to eat. So make sure your rams are in good condition heading into the breeding season. We're going to back up now. Okay, let's talk about the ewes. Because that's the other one... The ewes are, once they're mature, they swing with the seasons, what they actually need. We touched on this a little bit with the alfalfa and the different feed seeds, but ewes, when they're dry, can do just fine on hay. Um, if you've got pasture, excellent. Coming off of lactation, so after they're done milking, you wean the lambs, what we usually do is we separate the ewes. The ones that are thin versus the ones that are still in good condition. The ones that are in still good condition will go and get just get the hay. The ones that are thin are usually because they've been milking multiple lambs. Um, they maybe not be as aggressive up at the bunks or at the feeders, so they've kind of been pushed out. So we'll actually separate those so and give them a little extra grain to bring them back into condition before we throw everybody back together as far as the use. During that dry period, um, there's a period with sheep while they're dry, not milking, but they're also not growing a baby either. So they're just dry use. Okay? That's the easiest time to maintain them. If you need to change condition scores in there, condition score is a measure of how fat or thin they are. Okay? This is the time you're going to do it. Um, as you go into breeding, so back up a month from breeding, month to two weeks, depending on kind of where you're at, you're going to actually want to start bumping the nutrition plane of those ewes. We call this a flush. You can do the same thing with cows, other animals, we're just talking sheep right now. So we'll actually start giving them a little bit of grain. Um, we'll put some mineral tubs out, not some protein mineral tubs out. Um, kind of get that nutrition boost. What this does it, is it helps them to ovulate more. So you're more likely to get um, twin triplets. Have a better breeding percentage as well. We want all those ewes going into breeding season in good condition. Okay, once they are then gestating, they don't need a whole lot extra that first early trimester. Like, they just don't need a lot. Um, Ours usually get alfalfa during that point and not like the very, very stimmy alfalfa, the first cutting alfalfa. That usually goes in the dry period. Um, we're coming off of lactation. We're trying to dry them up. You want to crash their nutrition basically to help them dry up so you don't have mastitis. Going to that gestating period, you're kind of going to increase slowly their nutrition access as 
they get further along in a di into di into gestation. So gestation on a sheep is five months, okay? In that last couple months, you do not want to increase their nutrition much at all. Um, what happens is at that point, you just kind of maintain because if you keep giving them more, what you're going to wind up with is just really big lambs and you're going to wind up pulling a lot of lambs. If you're running out on native grass, um, this kind of does itself. Use naturally, sheep naturally breed in the fall so they can lamb in the spring. So kind of that September, October is kind of when we're starting to breed. Um, use so and then they come in so you have that lush green new grass right as the lambs are hitting the ground is kind of if you're doing on a grass system that's your goal so start back calculating from there because that lush green grass is going to be that good nutrition that they need for lactation period when their energy needs are the highest okay this is where it is very different from cows okay because the cows have they're just on a different cycle we'll talk about them next week Sheep, they're most immature animals. Their nutrition requirements are the most at that lactation period, okay? You want the green grass, the really good, nutritious, easily digestible food hitting there. If you're running grass systems, make sure you're targeting lambing around that time period. Back calculate your dates from there as far as the rest of it. Lambs, we're gonna back up. Actually, we're gonna go forward, sorry. Let's finish the use lactation they have the lambs now is when they're actually going to need the most nutrients this is when we bring out the because we're in a dry system we don't have safe access to pasture um, we just have too many predators and not a good enough pasture for our ewes to run in and by good enough I mean safe like there's a giant creek in gillies that runs through there there's no way to make it safe for sheep um, digressed. Lactation. Okay, so if they're milking multiples, ideally, so here's the ideal, you know how many they're carrying, right? Back in gestation. So you're feeding to the different numbers, like if they're carrying singles, twins, triplets, okay? This is the ideal. Doesn't actually usually happen, okay? Because you have to have the sp pen space, number one, to be able to split them. Number two, you have to be able to, in an area that has the vet who has the ultrasound and is willing, that's the key, willing to ultrasound all of your use. Here's the cheat. Assume they're all carrying twins. You'll hit the average, okay? Now, when you're lactating, you now know how many they were carrying. You now know how many they're going to be feeding, okay? If you have the pen space, now is where you ha are going to actually really want to separate those out. You're going to avoid the post-lactation period where you've got skinny ewes, fat ewes, because everybody's been eating together, if you can separate them. Again, we don't have the pen space to do that, so everybody kind of gets lumped together, and we sort it out at the end. Um, so you got the good quality alfalfa, the third, fourth cutting during lactation, they're probably going to get, like, if you're in a dry lot, we're getting um, corn and a uh, protein pellet, as well as that has some of the vitamins and minerals in it. And they're also, you always have access to an iodized salt block. We're an iodine-deficient area, so we need iodine in there. And then um, protein mineral dubs. That's lactation. We went through the dry up already. We pull all that extra stuff. They're just on hay. That helps their body to stop producing milk so you don't get the mastitis. All right, lambs, all right, they've been on mom. Um, what you're going to want to do in a dry setting, um, grass is totally different, we're just gonna talk about dry today for time's sake. Um, dry lot, you're going to have a creep area for them because lambs are gonna wanna start eating grain. Um, and what will happen is they will get up to the bunk and they'll either start jumping into the bunk, which is fine, um, then they're out of the way of the moms, or they're actually gonna get smashed in the bunk because the moms are all charging the bunk. So if you have a creep area, they have their own feed, 
this is going to be mainly a protein pellet at this early stages and then you start mixing corn in it as it gets closer to weaning. They're weaned, they're now away from mom, we actually separate them for a day, um, let them back together so they suck all the moms dry. It helps finish that um, milk cycle basically so then you don't have milk sitting there so then you get a whole bunch of mastitis issues. We've seen a way fewer mastitis once we started doing that. Um, they're now going to be getting some alfalfa lambs, we're back to lambs, alfalfa. They're going to get their grain. Um, we actually use old pig feeders. Yeah, old pig feeders is what we started with. Um, tie the lids up, just like you would train in pigs. Tie those lids up, teach them. You can either teach them to lift the lids open or just leave the lids tied up. Either way, you kind of got to watch them the first couple months. We fill that feeder then with um, their grain and basically let them have as much as they want. They do get um, what's called an overeating shot, so that's basically a cluster, an anti-clostridial mouthful, um, and it keeps them from getting sick, basically, because bacteria then proliferates. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's the basics. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Thank you.